Hello, and welcome to this presentation using NRP sensors with the SMA100B. In this short presentation, we'll discuss how to configure and use Rodian Schwartz NRP series power sensors with the SMA100B analog signal generator. There are two main ways that NRP power sensors are used with the SMA100B. The NRP Power Viewer application, which provides basic power level measurements, and the NRP-Z power analysis application, which allows for more sophisticated analysis and integrates both generator and sensor functionality. In addition, power sensors are also used with utilities such as user correction. This presentation will cover basic sensor attachment and the use of the NRP Power Viewer application. If you're interested in learning more about the NRP-Z power analysis application or about configuring user correction, separate presentations are available on both of these topics. There are three primary sensor connection methods. The SMA100B comes with a special sensor connector socket that mates with many common NRP series sensor cables. You can also connect one or more sensors to the SMA100B using USB connectors and cables. And LAN or Ethernet based power sensors can also be used with the SMA100B. In addition to these three main connection modes, it's also possible to add sensors to the SMA using the NRPZ5 sensor hub or a USB hub with an external power supply. In this presentation, however, we're going to limit ourselves to the three main connection methods. Up to four connected NRP sensors can be used simultaneously with the SMA100B. The first step in using NRP sensors with the SMA100B is something called sensor mapping, which is how we assign detected sensors to logical channels. We can access the sensor mapping dialog by clicking on Clock Synthesis Power Sensor in the main SMA100B GUI and then selecting NRP Sensor Mapping. The NRP sensor mapping dialog shows all of the attached and detected sensors, including their type, serial number, protocol, and connector. Sensors attached to the SMA via the sensor port or via USB are automatically detected. To find LAN sensors, the scan button can be used. In the column labeled mapping, physical sensors can be mapped to logical channels. The primary application of attached NRP power sensors is making basic RF power measurements of peak or average power. To configure or view NRP sensors, just click on Clock Synthesis Power Sensor in the main SMA100B GUI and then select NRP Power Viewer. In the NRP Power Viewer overview screen, detected sensors are listed by their channel or mapping numbers. Each sensor has its own tab, showing the sensor mapping, type, and serial number. The main GUI window also shows both the current type of measurement, average or peak, and the current measured level. If we want to configure a sensor, we simply click on its tab. There are many different configuration parameters and functions associated with each power sensor. These include enabling or disabling the sensor, zeroing the sensor, display parameters, frequency parameters, level parameters, filter and aperture parameters, S parameters, and logging. Let's spend a few minutes looking at what these mean and how and when we would use these parameters. It's good measurement practice to zero power sensors before use. This involves either disconnecting the power sensor from the device under test or disabling the device under test's RF output. To zero the sensor, click on the zero button and wait for a few seconds. Note that if RF is present during the zeroing, an error message will be displayed. The display settings control whether or not we see a given sensor in the summary tab and what kinds of power measurement results are displayed. First, checking display permanent for a given sensor causes that sensor and its power level to be continuously or permanently displayed on the left side of the screen. If unchecked, the sensor is removed from the list. For each attached power sensor, the measured power can be displayed either as an average or as a peak power. Depending on the type of signal being measured, these values might be almost the same or might be quite different. In the overview screen, the power measurement type is shown for each sensor. Power sensors are not normally frequency selective devices. They measure the sum or total power of all the signals within their measurement range. However, specifying the frequency of the signal when we're measuring will increase our measurement accuracy. We can do this in one of two ways within PowerViewer either manually enter the frequency or automatically have the measurement frequency match the generator output frequency. Having the sensor automatically match its frequency to the generator's output frequency is helpful when we're using the generator as a source. 
In many cases, there's a loss, or less commonly a gain, between the source and the sensor. This could be due to things like cable loss, splitters, couplers, attenuators, etc. In these cases, our displayed power level now no longer shows the output power of the device under test. If we specify a level offset, our displayed or measured power will show the true output power of the device under test. Let's look at an example. Here, our generator output level is minus 30 dBm, but due to a splitter, attenuator, and cable loss, our measured average power level is minus 36.65 dBm. We can correct for this by enabling the level offset state and setting the level offset to 6.65 dBm. Our measured average power level now shows the power at the generator output. Power is measured over defined intervals, and the length of an interval is called the aperture. Power Viewer can use so-called averaging filters to obtain more stable results by averaging multiple measured values. If we increase aperture time and or the number of averages, this increases the accuracy or stability of our measurement. However, increasing the aperture time and or the average filter count also increases the measurement time. By default, Power Viewer automatically configures the settings for both averaging filter and aperture time, and if results are stable, it's usually best to use these default values. Both of these parameters can, however, be manually configured. With regards to aperture time, if we're measuring a modulated signal with a known period, setting the aperture time to this period will yield more stable measurement results. And with regards to filters, there are three filter modes in Power Viewer: Auto, which is the default and is recommended for most applications, User, and Fixed Noise. If results are unstable, it's best to switch to user mode. The filter length can be manually entered, or auto once can be used to have the instrument search for the optimal filter length. Note that as power level decreases, filter length typically increases. In fixed noise mode, the averaging factor is automatically computed from the user supply's noise signal ratio, such that the sensor's intrinsic noise doesn't exceed the specified noise content. A timeout can also be set to avoid excessively long measurement times when power is very low. The frequency-specific behavior of cables, components, and devices between the DUT and the sensor input can be quantified using so-called S-parameters. This S-parameter data can then be used to shift the reference plane of our measurement from the sensor input to the device under test. Power Viewer allows users to select and activate sets of S-parameter measurements that have been made and stored on the sensor. The S-Parameter tool included with the NRP Toolkit can be used to create and edit these S-Parameter files. Power Viewer can write measurements to a log file. These logs contain the measured average and or peak power values, as well as the type of sensor, serial number, and measurement time or a timestamp. Logging is enabled when the Enable Logging checkbox is ticked and stopped when the box is cleared. Log files are stored in var user sensor logging on the SMA100B, and each log is automatically named senselogn.txt, where n is the sensor number. The log files are in CSV format for easy processing. So in summary, NRP series RF power sensors can be connected to, and used directly with, the SMA100B analog signal generator. Sensors are most often connected via the built-in sensor or USB ports, and LAN-based sensors can also be used with the SMA100B. Measurements can be made on up to four sensors simultaneously. There are three common applications for power sensors. The first of these, Power Viewer, provides basic RF power measurement functionality and was covered in detail in this presentation. The NRP Power Analysis application provides more sophisticated analysis capabilities, as well as integrated generator control. And the user correction utility provides a way of compensating for the frequency response of external devices. This concludes our presentation using NRP sensors with the SMA100B. If you'd like to learn more about NRP power sensors, the SMA100B, additional power sensor applications, or related test and measurement topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.